Hello and a very warm welcome back to The Garden and in this video I'm going to talk about a very topical subject and that is to do with stockpiling and we're in this unique period of time where both the pause and the panic buttons have been pressed and it is very strange and I'm sure all of you can relate and firstly I want to wish all of you watching this and your families that you stay safe and healthy um, and that hopefully over time this can all be resolved because it's strange it is very strange and I was thinking about what kind of video to do because there were so many different angles that I could take as a gardener based on the current events that are happening. But I came to the conclusion that making a video about stockpiling would probably be the best for the time being because with both the pause and the panic buttons pressed, that causes stockpiling. And we know that if we're gonna have a long period of time at home where we're just paused, twiddling our thumbs, not really sure what to do with ourselves. We need to make sure that we have enough food resources to support that. And I don't blame anyone for stockpiling. But I think there's a different way of looking at stockpiling in a more sustainable and self-sufficient way. And last week's video would definitely be worth watching as well because it's about five tips on how to begin becoming self-sufficient. And I'll also give a shameless plug to my book Grow Food for Free which is all about starting off self-sufficiency and becoming resilient without actually having to rely on using any money and a lot of the things that you can use will already be in your home and it actually links in nicely with this about stockpiling food and gardening. Stockpiling is a very heated debate and panic buying and, and everything's just gone a bit mental so I'm just going to tone it down make a nice simple video talking through some tips and ideas on how a garden can be the best way in my opinion to stockpile food so you have food security and resilience and the thing is if you already have a garden hopefully some of these tips in this video will also help you but if you don't have a garden at all i'm sure by the end of this video you'll be ready to get out there and do quite a bit of growing if you think about having an allotment or a vegetable garden, it's a stockpile of seasonal, fresh and nutritious food. And that is a great thing. I also did a video last year about why your garden can be your own private greengrocers. And that also links in really nicely with this video. So you've got a bit of watching to do if you've got some time in your hands after watching this one. The first idea I'm gonna give can be used by anyone from if you just have a windowsill to a really large back garden. And something that we know, and I'm sure you've all been researching this, is things that are cheap and should be stockpiled. And these are usually dried goods that are high in carbs. For example, pasta or rice. And then you've also got proteins as well. So maybe your beans, your pulses, your lentils, for example. And these are cheap and you can buy them in bulk and they will last for years. However, there is one problem with these kind of high carb, high protein dried goods is that if you just cook them by themselves, it's gonna be a bit bland. And the most important thing, if you're wanting to stockpile for an event that happens like this, is you want flavor because you want a changed life to still be as normal or as realistic to your usual life as possible. And imagine spending three months at home with really bland food, uh, which would be pretty, pretty annoying actually, although it will make you appreciate flavor a lot more. But I think to overcome this, one of the simplest things that you can do is simply grow fresh herbs. Nothing beats fresh herbs, whether they're annuals or perennials in terms of flavor. So in terms of a really easy way to start stockpiling is grow flavor. And this is the best thing that you can do. Now, after you've been doing a bit of herbs, the next thing to do is to look at other things that add flavour and what immediately comes to my mind are the alliums. So that's your leeks, your onions, your shallots, your garlic. All of these taste great and they add so much flavour and so much depth to things that you're cooking, whether it is pasta or it's lentils, they make such a difference. But when you come to stockpiling, you've got to think quite tactically about what you're growing. For example, onions are great, but onions are pretty cheap and they can also be 
brought in bulk and you can store them for a while. If you have the space, I definitely recommend growing onions. But what I would actually recommend if you have a smaller space is growing an alternative to onions. And that's leeks because leeks can actually be a fantastic substitute for onions in your cooking. And I've been doing that quite a lot recently and they're brilliant. The great thing about leeks as well that we've got to remember is that after you've sown them and transplanted them, you can usually start harvesting them from the end of October all the way through to March with the hardy varieties. And if any are left over, you can blanch them and freeze them for up to six months. So you can continue going to your freezer and grabbing bits of leek as an onion substitute. And I think this makes so much sense because with leeks, which are a winter vegetable, and especially if you grow them quite big in pots before transplanting, it allows you to grow more things during spring and summer, which the onions would have taken up. For example, you might want to grow potatoes uh, or beetroot, things like these, which actually store quite well in the ground, but can also store quite well in a cool, shady place. So by substituting onions with leeks, it allows you to free up more space to start growing in some other things which will help in the grander scheme of things. Another idea is to just look out for vegetable varieties that aren't as prone to bolt and a really popular one is beetroot bolt hardy and things like these are great because it means that you can store things for longer your crops for longer outdoors now this is going to be quite difficult for some things and you've got your fruiting vegetables like your peas um, and also your beans which you can't just keep them outdoors and harvest them as and when needed you've got to be tactical but when it comes to more salads and root vegetables vegetables, the more bolt resistant varieties you can get and grow, the better that's going to be for the long term. Something you have to understand about your garden being your stockpile or your outdoor pantry is that through the seasons it's always going to change in terms of what's available for you and you don't have to spend lots of time preserving food because every month you get new crops coming in and going out and when you get bored of something you'll get something new that will replace it. So what you've got to do is just accept that you're not going to be able to have everything you want throughout the year unless you spend a lot of time working on preserving but instead to embrace the change and embrace seasonality and we're just coming into the hungry gap now which is a little bit tricky but something that we've got we've still got a lot of carbs left over from winter we've also got a lot of salad crops that are beginning to come through we've got rhubarb things like these it all just changes as the seasons progress and there's a lot of stuff that we've done in the freezer you know so many vegetables just harvest them give them a wash cut them up blanch them for a couple of minutes bag them and freeze them and it makes a massive difference but you've just got to embrace the fact that the season changes and what's available in your outdoor stockpile will change as the seasons continue and progress supermarkets for example rely on supply chains but for a garden the main supply chain is you so you've also got to look after yourself and make sure that you can keep the garden going because you can think of yourself as the manager of the garden to make sure that all of the aisles are stocked and in terms of aisles those will be your raised beds and there are so many ways of doing this, whether that's doing a monthly planting plan, which I absolutely love and really does improve your productivity, to just having a whiteboard maybe in your house where you simply write down what's available at any one point in time. So you can just take a quick glance and say, oh, I've still got beetroot and swede. Maybe I'll make a beetroot and swede mash, for example. Just things like this, just to make it much easier for you. Because if you spend just a little bit of time doing a bit more organization it's going to make the whole process of growing foods a lot more efficient and a lot more effective for you and it ultimately means that your garden is going to be a far more resilient stockpile so if an event like this happens again or maybe we're still feeling the effects three or four months down the line from now I know that I've got food growing that's going to be ready in three or four months and it's a really beautiful secure feeling to, to know that. The final tip I'm going to give in terms of using your garden as a really good stockpile is to just try and grow as many different 
types of vegetables as possible. Not as many different varieties as possible because that can become confusing, but I want you to grow annual vegetables that take every single vegetable group, such as brassicas, uh, or your legumes or your salads. The reason why is that no matter what kind of season or climate you'll experience this year, whether it's a really wet summer or a really hot dry summer, growing a diverse range of crops will mean that you'll always have a real big success no matter what kind of year you experience. So those are just a few ideas that have been going on in my head over the last few days. And I think it's a nice opportunity to perhaps open it up for discussion down below in the comments section to ask questions or if you have any worries or anything. I'll be very active in the comments section of this video because I've got a lot of time on my hands. And if you want to do some reading because you have a lot of spare time on your hands and you want to support the channel, then do get yourself a copy of Grow Food for Free. And I guarantee you're gonna learn a lot of things in it that will help. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll be probably doing some more videos that are based on these current topics um, over the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. But for now, I've got to go and pot up some tomato seedlings. Goodbye.